So we're back for day two here. Hold conditioning. We're gonna start with Elsa again. I've got Tito in the background. I'm sure you'll hear him. Much more excitable. Elsa's a much more relaxed dog. She settled in real nice yesterday. I am gonna put her on the on the tether here. You can see how intense how tensed up she gets when I move her around. So she's still gotta get used to this. She's just bracing against it. I'm gonna put this on. She's gonna have to sit down. I'm just gonna take a step back and let her kind of get comfortable. You can see right now she's not. And the only way she's gonna settle in is she's gonna have to be okay with moving a little bit. And then she's gonna realize, huh, just get a little bit further over here and it's not so much pressure on my neck. It still is a little tight. She settled in really quickly, I thought yesterday. Um, she has a tendency to be pretty easy going. She also holds very well to this point with retrieving. So we'll see how quickly we progress through the whole process. But I am gonna let her kind of relax a little bit because she started out pretty intense, pretty. And if we jump right into trying to get them to learn something and she's in that kind of state of mind, that mentality, it's real unlikely that it's gonna sink in. It's real unlikely that she's going to get it in the first place. It's hard for things to click when they're thinking about other things in their mind. I think they have to have focus on whatever the task at hand is. And for this, we're trying to get this hold, this understanding of hold, this process of hold. Um, so she's got to get, just get settled in a little bit. She's still pretty intense. I'm, I'm noticing her breathing. I'm watching for her breathing to relax a little bit. A nice... A nice sigh would be good. Her willingness to move around a little bit would be good. She's tight right. I mean, this is not super tight. She's not pressing, pulling against it, but she's not loose either. And I'd like her to figure out that if she moves over a little bit, it'll probably feel a little bit better. And I, I instead of me trying to force her to do that, I, sometimes you just have to let that happen on its own. They have to kind of discover some of that stuff. That's a little bit better. Just me kind of reassuring her that it's all right. That's. She'd be better off if she moved six inches this way. But the one thing about her is she was over here before and she was real intent, real tensed up, really prying and pushing on it. So she's probably a little shy to go back to that spot. Remember, this is to keep their head up because I don't want them ducking down. Because if they duck down, it's easy to drop. If they're up here, it's harder for them to drop it down. It takes longer, it's an extra step, they gotta put their head down. So I'm just trying to prep for when we get to the point of putting in the dowel. So I'm gonna clip her back up. You can see as soon as I pull, her reflex is to push against me. So this this is something she has to figure out, this neck thing, giving to get closer to it to turn that any pre there is a sigh give any pressure away, you know, any of this pressure that's on her neck, the easiest way to do that is to come a little closer. Come here. Come over here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But part of her being so, so tensed up is because she didn't like being by the edge here yesterday, earlier, a couple minutes ago. Go ahead. Come here. Come here. Go ahead. This is, this is tight. So little things like her shaking and her muscles kind of twitching and she's not really at ease yet. I'm not going to go into hold until she's 100% at ease and settled in. Or I'm introducing something that I'm hoping is going to go well and I'm putting it, starting it out in a really bad spot. Don't connect things that you want to be positive to things that are negative. And in the beginning here, this is what I would call a negative. She's not settled. She's not where she needs to be, mentally or physically. Good. 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 Good.
I'd like you to move a little. Come here. Come here. Good girl. There. Very good. That's it. Good. See how that just released that pressure? Good girl. Good girl. So I'm just going to kind of let her figure this out. So I, I physically take a step back away from her. I don't want to be there to be a coddling either. I don't want it to be like i got to hold her hand through this. I want her to get settled in and have this confidence to be settled in a little bit. There's a nice... She just yawned a little bit. That's a good sign. Today she's a little, a little more uneasy, I would say, up on the freezer than she was yesterday. Go ahead. You're fine. You're fine. Good girl. So I wouldn't mind seeing a little tail wag out of her. And physically some body language things that shows me that she's just a little more comfortable. Before I go any further. Like I said, sometimes this might be a couple days of this, just getting used to it. Coming up to her and petting her, walking away, coming up, petting her. I need this place to be good and okay and comfortable. Because I'm going to start introducing something that's real new to her. And so, she's got to be in that state of mind. Very good. And as much as I want it to be like right now, there's a lot of times when I'm doing training stuff where I want it to be now, it's just not. And there's just nothing I can do about it. Be okay with that. Realize it, recognize it, don't push forward and get yourself into a bind. Instead, just say, well, what do I have to do to figure it out? Maybe it's more time. A lot of times, the answer is just more time. Take your time. Be patient. This is loosened up a little bit. Good. You have to be willing to be okay with not necessarily going as quickly as you want to. It's going as quickly as they'll allow you to go. So I'm going to take a step back from her. Leave her, kind of leave her on her own little island a little bit. Let her know that it's all right. Good girl. I know when I can see that little, that tab on the back, when I can see it start bouncing around, I know it's starting to loosen up. I know her, there, good, there she just adjusted. She just shifted and she actually moved over a little bit, which took that lead and let that lead come a little looser. That's a, that's a lot, but it went from this to this. It's not a huge difference, but when I can wiggle it around like that and, and it's loose, I know there's not, now there's not pressure on her neck like there was when it was like this. It was like this. Now it's getting loose. Good. Very good. So those are little changes that I look at and I go, that's good. That's a step forward. That's a, that's a positive. And you probably can hear it in my voice of, that was a positive. That was a good move. That was something that dog hears that too. Very good. And she adjusts again. Good girl. Now it's real loose. Very good. Good girl. And all of a sudden, she's kind of becoming a little bit less stiff and rigid. She's moving around a little bit. She moved her feet twice now. And when she did that, the result was less pressure on the neck. Good girl. Very good. Her head's down a little bit. Her muscles, if you look at her muscles right now, they're not twitching. Before they were twitching. Because she was real tensed up before. Now she, her whole, her whole body, her muscles and everything have relaxed. Now she's getting to that point where I go, now I might try to do something with her. Because if I tried to do something with her before there, she's adjusting. She's moving around. She can move her head. She can realize, she's realizing now that she can move. Good. Very good. 
She'll probably get to the point where I start saying that and she'll wag her tail a little bit. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. She's reaching out. Now look how loose this is. She's reaching out to me. Very good. She tensed up a little bit when I walked back to her. Good girl. I kind of think she might think might have thought at that moment we were done. She kind of got excited about that, thinking I'm out of here, and then I left her alone. Left her alone again. Now she's relaxed. Her muscles are relaxed again. So, I feel like she's kind of. She settled a little bit. I feel her muscles. She's soft again. Good. So I might even try with the dowel here today. Now that I feel like I've got her in a state where she might be all right. Now, she loves to retrieve. So this isn't necessarily going to be tough for her. She'll probably take this pretty well. This is an action thing. Now we're getting some action going. And I'm going to see how she responds. If she freaks out, I probably don't go any further. <clears throat> She's not freaking out, so I'm going to probably put it in her mouth. But if she were to freak out right now, I'd just pick this up and then I'd set it back down. And then I'd let her settle in again. So I'd go to the point where it gets to the point where she starts to get out of the state of mind where I know she needs to be. And then I realize that's like my stopping point. Don't keep pushing through it. I get to that stopping point and then I set it back down and I go, no big deal. Good girl. She's real soft right now. When I say soft, I mean like, it's not tense. She's very calm. She's real relaxed. She's not panting anymore. Start a little bit now, but for a minute there, she wasn't even panting. Good girl. It means she's now under stress. Good. So I pick it back up. With her, the thing about this is it probably gets her attention because she is really likes this. She likes retrieving. She doesn't know what this is because we've never retrieved a wooden doll before, but we've retrieved things that look kind of like this. She gets she she's gone through phases where. She'll retrieve anything and everything. Whatever she saw, she'd pick it up and want to carry it around. So I'm just putting it in my hand, getting her used to it, being in my hand, no big deal. Good. Now, for the first time putting this in, we're going to see how she does. Some dogs fight it terribly. Like, will really fight it. Some dogs take it real easy. Some dogs take it so too easy that they almost, like, won't close their mouth on it. So it just depends. I don't know how she's going to do We've not put one in her mouth yet. But the biggest thing is, and this is going to be true with every dog, no matter which one, you have to roll these gums back out of the way. You can't have this gum pinched in between this and this. You've got to roll these back out of the way, open it up, and I like to take my finger and stick my finger in there, kind of pry it open, and at the same time roll the dowel in. Now she just put the, just the beautiful amount of pressure on. And I'm going to keep my hand right here. Good. Good. Hold. 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 And I'm actually taking my hand off of her. Hold. Good. Hold. Dead. Very good. Very good. Now, this dog in particular, up to this point, has made a lot of retrieves very well and delivered it to me. And I've encouraged it. I've brought it in whenever she brings me a bumper, I share it with her. I don't, I'm not quick to snatch it away from her. I've never chased her with something in her mouth. I've always gotten down and welcomed her to me. She recalls real well, she sits real well. I even got to the point where I'd call her to me and have her sit. And then I'd thank her for it and share it with her. And then I'd finally take it out and I use the command dead. I start that when they're really little and it doesn't even matter anything, it doesn't mean anything to them. But dead is gonna be the idea. When I say dead, you can open your mouth and drop it. You don't do it until I say that. So there's a timing thing here. So when I put this back in, again, get up over their muzzle, roll the gums up, pry down the bottom, and I push, roll this thing in. And then I get these bottom gums out of the way. Have to have them done with teething. You can't, you can't do this until they're done teething. Teething's going to happen anywhere from four to six months. Now I've got my hand under her chin and I'm lifting up slightly so that she can't put it down. I'm not pushing her. 
but she can't push her hand head down right now. If I do bring my hand down, she comes with me. Right to that point. Hold. Once she gets to the point where I feel like it's down too low, I just bring it back up and hold. 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 You can see it becoming uncomfortable for her because her tongue's pinned. Hold. Dead. So get it out. Don't go too long, too early. Those are long, actually. For her second time, that was a pretty long one. You could see her mouth start going. She probably had to swallow or something, but her tongue was pinned. So I don't want to go too long. So I might go, we've done two, I'm going to go for a third, and then we're probably going to be done with her. I roll it in, get the gums out of the way, hold. And I love her eye contact. Hold. 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 She's mouthing it a little bit, so I'm going to keep my hand right here to try to eliminate this open, close, open, close, open, close. Hold. Hold. Good. Hold. Good. Hold. Dead. Very good. And that's it. That's enough for today. Now the things I really like about it was she took it very well. Some dogs will fight it. Well, you're going to see some of the dogs that I'm going to be working with will fight it. She didn't fight it nearly that hard. She took it pretty well. If I had brought my hand down and away, I think she may have spit it out and dropped it. She definitely would have brought her head down. We're starting this habit. We're starting it like the day one. So this is day two, but really the first day we put it in. I want to form a habit that's chin up. Because when they come and deliver, I want chin up. I don't want this because they just open your mouth and it falls out. I want chin up, eye contact. Here it is. Hold. That's what I would have. So, very good. I'm gonna take her, that's it with her, and we'll go get we'll get Tito up.